I remember back when uh, I was in high school, and they used to make us work out so that you could play sports. And the day I dreaded the most was leg day. Y'all understand this was 30 years ago, all right? But I still remember it. Um, if you've ever seen me in shorts, you will know that I have been skipping leg day for a long time. Not that my legs are fat. They are actually like sticks. I look like a chicken. Um, or I think a tall pigeon would be a better uh, ostrich. Yeah, something like that. Um, not that I have long legs. It's just, you know, I have a bigger body. So I guess a chicken would be all right. But anyway, on leg day, you would work out, you would do squats, you would do presses and stuff like that, and the next day you could not walk. Your muscles just was like this, and you just could not move. And God laid this on my heart with this scripture here today out of Acts chapter 3, um, how much we all are in need of a good leg day. I want you to understand that in this scripture tonight, I want you to see yourself in two different characters, okay? I want you to see yourself in Peter, and I also want you to see yourself in the cripple, okay? Because we all um, are at one or the other spot right now in our life, all right? Now, it starts off in Acts chapter 3, verse 1, and it says, One day... Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. Now, let me stop right here for a second. I want you to understand something. This temple gate this called Beautiful. Everything in the Bible, if there is a name for it, there is a reason for it. Okay? This gate was called beautiful by the people that lived there in Jerusalem because it was the, the gate in between the Gentile settlement and the Jewish settlement. And right outside the temple where all of Jesus' followers, the most generous people, would walk through. So the people that were on the outside called that gate beautiful because the people that walked through that gate Oh, how beautiful are the feet of those who carry the gospel. Isn't that what the Bible says about those who preach the word? So they just named that gate beautiful. Well, that's a beautiful place right there. We know that people are going to help us here. And then the King James Version says that his friends carried him here um, every day. They took the time just like the, the friend, the four friends took that, that guy up on the roof and lowered him down so that Jesus could heal him. Those friends did what they could do. They probably didn't have any money either. So this guy, he couldn't work because he had been crippled since birth. He could not walk. And since he could not walk, he begged. Now, let me tell you this. It says every day, every single day, he went there to beg for those. And what he was begging for was alms, A-L-M-S. Alms was a charity giving that um, if you ever had a need, someone of, of good moral character would come along and give you alms. And it wasn't going to make you rich. Um, it was you were in need and they were in a position to help you in need. Y'all, we do that every week with tithing. Sometimes you are able to do it one-on-one -on -one or with somebody personally. And giving alms to someone is never going to happen unless first that person gets rid of their pride. Okay? You can never receive help unless you admit that you need help. Unless you ask for help. There's a lot of people that... Um, Y'all, I have had somebody mad at our church before because we did not know that they were in need. And it was somebody that I talked to regularly. But they had a need and we didn't know about it. And they got mad at me and cussed me out because I didn't know that they were in a specific kind of need. I was like, well, how are we going to know unless you let us know? So, well, I just figured y'all would know. Okay. 
I don't know about y'all, but we do have some powers. But that's not one of them, okay? I have been around Christian folk long enough to know that they can act. And they can put on a face. And pride will keep that face up to where nobody knows that you're in trouble. Nobody knows that you are in sin. Nobody knows that, that you've got this whole thing going on you know, behind the scenes. Everybody, listen, your family members, your friends, your church members, your church family, everybody has got something going on that they are too proud to admit. It could be a bad habit. It could be something simple. I got a problem with with salt and sugar. You know, uh, you look at me, it's probably pretty apparent. Um, uh, is he getting bigger? Hmm. Jody's just zooming in every week. So, you know, it's it's an optical illusion, right? The the stage makes you look bigger or the lights or something. I mean, there's all kinds of excuses, but if we swallow our pride, it's like, you know what? I do need some help. <laughs> Um, next time we have a fellowship, you know, just, uh, you know, when you make that corn uh, salad thing, just don't put sugar in it, you know? Um, something like that. They're just little things to help us out. I was looking at you, Brent. Um, it's delicious, though. <laughs> That's not nice. It's it's fellowship. You know. It's supposed to be for all of us. But any anyhow, um this man <laughs> his friends took care of him. But he had to I mean, it was pretty obvious with this guy. I mean, he was crippled. Uh, so they knew that he needed help. And they took him to where he could receive help. And I think that that's where we all are because in our natural state, from the moment we are born, we are not, we're not spiritually or mentally able to walk with God until we admit that we are ready to walk with God. Nobody can be saved until they want to be saved. Okay? Um, you don't receive salvation because of someone else is praying for you to be saved. You have to pray that prayer, okay? And in our in our natural state, we're not able to work for God or walk with God. We've got to come to the realization that we need God before you know we can walk with Him. So we're all crippled in our natural state, and we all get to a point in our life when we do realize this. We do need to um, be healed. And hopefully that somebody is, is, is going to feel that this week. And they're going to realize that I have been weak. I have been, you know, trying to just limp around and, and, and make do. But you don't have to. God wants to raise you up. He wants to sit you up. And He wants to take you from being the cripple to the one that heals the cripple. That's a big difference. We're getting ahead of ourselves. In verse 3 it says, When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. As you do. Because that's all he knew how to do. So he asked them for money, for alms. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Do you, look at this now. How many times do you see somebody, say, outside of Walmart, and they're holding up a sign? It makes it a lot easier to ride by them if you don't make eye contact, right? That way you can act like you didn't see them. Do y'all do that? I mean, I don't know. I ain't got no cash on me, so what's the point in making eye contact? I want to stare them down like, sorry, I know, you know. I'm praying for you. you know, good luck. You know, I don't know what to do. So instead of making it harder on myself, I just won't look at it. In this case, when you see somebody in need, you can be like Peter. 
First thing, though, you have got to be walking with God. You can't be the cripple anymore. If you're walking with God, then you have to look right at him in the eye, as did Peter. Peter and John, they looked him straight in the eye, and then Peter said, look at us. So not only was Peter fixed on the problem, fixed on the opportunity, but he was saying, if you, wanna, if you want God, then you've got to look to Him. If you, if you want to be blessed, then you've got to look to Him. Now this guy, he was expecting at this point, since somebody looked at him and made eye contact with him, he was like the dude sitting on the side of the road with the sign, as soon as you make eye contact with them, they're ready to go. They are ready to walk up to your car to get whatever you're ready to give. And if you don't make eye contact, they just sit and chilling. You know, what I normally do is if I have to stop right in front of them, I won't look the whole time. And then when it's time to go, then I'll look and I'll wave. I'm trying to be polite. I'm trying to be honest with y'all. But Peter looked straight at him because he did have something to offer. Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. He knew he was about to get something. Then Peter said to this man, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. Now, at this point, I I want to imagine what what this situation is like. Okay, What's going on in this man? Here he is sitting at the same place he sat at probably most of his life, okay? He's probably got his own little section right there at the gate. Everybody knows him that walks by. Everybody's avoiding him, okay? And he's sitting there, and all of a sudden these two guys come out of the temple and, and or, or go into the temple, and they see him make eye contact with him. Silver or gold I don't have, but I will give you what I have. Okay, okay. Well, it's probably not going to be, you know, more different kinds of money. He's probably just as broke as I am. I'm curious. What's he about to say? Probably several folks were around him. They were listening. They were watching. And then Peter says something that this man was, I'm pretty sure, not expecting. His problem was he could not walk. He couldn't work because he couldn't walk. He couldn't go places. His friends had to carry him because he couldn't walk. They didn't have like wheelchairs, I don't guess, back then because every case in the Bible where there was a cripple, they were either crawling or their friends was toting them around. I knew they had wheels back then, but I guess they didn't put them on a chair yet. Show me in the Bible where it mentions a wheelchair. I mean, that might have been a great gift. Hmm. Suppose somebody is crippled and they they need to get around better and you give them a wheelchair. That's kind of exactly what Peter was doing, right? Giving somebody the ability to get around? We got a wheelchair. So I guess we could put on the church website that we can help you walk again if you can't. Hmm. See? Y'all didn't know we could help that, did you? Tell you what, the possibilities are endless. What God could do if we think about it. <laughs> did you hear that? We ain't got to think about it. He'll tell us. Jesus, uh, Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. That's what he says to this guy. And notice that Peter made sure that everybody that was around that gate knew exactly who he was talking about. He didn't say in the name of Jesus. He didn't say in the name of Jesus Christ. He said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know that Nazarene that y'all said nothing good come out of Nazareth? You know the same one that Herod tried to make sure was dead, whose father took him off to Egypt and he came back? You know the one that Simeon and Anna was, was... was talking about at the temple all them years. You know the little boy, little 12-year-old boy that came back to this temple when he was 12 years old and was in there teaching the people? 
And then for the next 18 years, they were afraid that this guy was going to come back and just take over everything. That guy, that's who he's talking about. That guy. In his name. Walk. Everybody's like, oh. He just died on the cross and got up out of the grave. These guys have been powered by this new way that's going on. We heard about the shaking of the temple when he died, and we heard about the house shaking when his spirit came. We know that these guys have his spirit, and he's telling them to walk. So if I'm standing around there and I'm not a believer, I'm checking this out. I'm curious at least, and I want to see what's going on. Y'all, that is what God wills for His churches. It's for the people that cannot make it to heaven on their own to come find the way to heaven. Okay? And He does it by performing miracles through His people. Because when God shows out, there is no debating who did it. And when God's people start acknowledging what God is doing, people can't stand around and not acknowledge it themselves. Because as we learned this morning, they will be in awe. It's just blowing, our, blowing their minds. I can't believe what's going on. And what did you do to, to bring about this, this glorifying praise for God? You just told somebody what happened. And you gave God the credit. Not just any God, not a little G God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm telling you who I'm talking about. Who has saved me? Hmm? Who has healed me time and time again? Who has brought me out of, out of chains of bondage? Who helped you through a rough day? Maybe you got a a spouse or a loved one that, that needs to hear that you made it through the day thanks to God Almighty. Maybe you arrived safely at home and your family needs to hear God was with me today. Thank Jesus I had a good day today. I was able to witness to somebody today and then hopefully that seed that was planted today is going to grow into something awesome. Or maybe you run into somebody that has never learned to walk and you help them to walk with Jesus. Folks in this world are going to stand around and be in awe of that. And that's what revives a community. Church is revived because all the crippled folk start walking. <laughs> they get up and start walking and maybe, maybe, maybe they do like this guy. It says, taking him by the right hand. He helped him up and instantly... The man's feet and his ankles became strong. Instantly. Just he didn't have to go to physical therapy. They didn't, they didn't even lay hands on it. He grabbed him by the hand and he got up. And it said he jumped to his feet and he began to walk. Now, I don't know about y'all, but if I've been sitting for ten minutes, if I told you to jump up right now. Would it really be jumping up? You'd get up, probably, ooh, you know, stretch out a little bit. Your foot may be asleep. I mean, who knows? Sometimes I like to sit on one of my feet most of the time, and my knee will go to sleep, or if I stand up, my foot will feel like I'm standing in an ant bed. It's asleep. And I don't know if that's the... I need Katie here. I need to ask her... What that's really called, because it ain't going to sleep. I don't know what it's called. It's probably some big word that I couldn't spell anyway. Like asphyxiation or something. But that's choking. And I learned that because uh, I didn't want to asphyxiate um, with acid in the middle of the night. So I learned that word. Um, it starts with an A. And this man jumped up to his feet and he began to walk. Now, if he had been crippled from birth, he did not know how to walk. When people 
first come to know Jesus, they do not automatically gain all the knowledge of the Bible because you, you can't learn it all because the Holy Spirit is steadily teaching us new things and different things. But as far as walking with Jesus, he didn't know how to walk, but in that moment God gave him the ability to walk. And he jumped up and began to walk. Now that is a miraculous healing. Peter didn't have to help him. He didn't have to hold his hand. He got up and he began to walk. When's the last time you, church, felt some power like that? Where God moved on you in such an awesome and dynamic way where there was no mistaking that this power is coming from the Holy Spirit. When's the last time you felt spiritually bulletproof and and ready for whatever Satan was throwing, throwing your way. You don't be scared. Satan's going to throw some pretty fiery darts. He's going he's to fire some shots at us, and he's going to hit. And he's going to do some things to try to knock us down and try to cripple us again. But once Jesus Christ picks us up out of hell and teaches us to walk, y'all, you can't stop walking with God. You're going to walk with Him. And man, the walk of the Christians, the Christians that I know, y'all, walking with God is such an inspiration, the way that you you just dust yourself off and keep going. It's amazing. And I could I could point at any of y'all and talk about some of the things that y'all have done, some of the things that y'all have been through. I mean, from, from the littlest on up to the, well, not the biggest, but the oldest, we could say, you know? Because, I mean, if I say the biggest, I'm somebody, I, I might have to point it. I don't do that. But. A sweet Ellie, Ellie bug back here. You know, she is, she is talking to me about when school gets out and just sound like such a grown-up, you know. I remember when you was just a baby. When we first started uh, coming to know your mom and dad, they invited us, was it the first birthday party? At a park, you know, I don't like birthday parties, but we went. You don't remember that, do you? Because you would be very weird if you did. And just come a long way, you know. I know, Kelly, your mom's talked to me about the different surgeries and, or, or different problems that you've had and with with your, your feet and stuff like that and your legs and, you know, you have needed a leg day several times in your life, right? And you needed somebody to pray for your feet and, and your legs. And now you're running cross country, you know, which absolutely does not sound appealing to me whatsoever. I wouldn't even want to run cross county, <laughs> you know. And y'all are running cross country. I mean... Pretty soon you're going to have on a red Bubba Gump hat and have a big beard like Forrest Gump. You ever seen that? Is it that old? Wow. White got in a church van with me the other day and he was checking out the door and he, he grabbed a handle and moved it and the window moved. He said, that's what that does? He was in awe. It was amazing. But when Christian folks learn to walk and we get, we get on the path with God, I mean, there's going to be some awesome stuff that this world needs to hear about and see. Like your feet. Or Wyatt's experience with the, what's that called? The window handle? Is that the technical name for it? Close enough? Winder? It ain't Medea. It's a winder. Winder winder. But y'all, more, more impressive than him walking. The second part of verse 8 says, Then he went with them into the temple courts. Understand this. 
When this man got healed, when he learned to walk, first thing he did was go to church. And y'all, that is the purpose, um, one of the, the, the wonderful opportunities of the church is to be able to bring other folks to church. When you teach them how to walk, when you help pick somebody up, and then you get to take them into the fellowship with other believers, it's... This man not only walked into church, it said walking, jumping, and praising God. This man was so excited that he not only walked to church, he jumped to church. And he was skipping to church. He, what's skipping? He didn't know what skipping was, but he's doing it. He's hopping to church. He's like, I've never seen a rabbit in my life, but I'm rabbit hopping all the way to church. I'm excited because my feet are working. I'm excited because my legs are all right. I got some power in them now. I'm, I'm, I'm up. I'm not going to have to have my friends to tote me to the temple gate every day. I can go and work. I can, I can have a somewhat normal life now. And I, I'm just, my, my life is changed and it's open for whatever God wants. That's how this man was. And y'all, that's exactly what the Christian life should be. God, you have saved me. Now I'm ready to do anything you want. I'm going to preach. I'm going to sing. I'm going to teach. I'm going to witness. What is it that God is wanting you to do? How many times in the Bible have you heard or read about somebody being healed? And immediately after the healing, they sat back down. They couldn't. When the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you, there is no sitting down on that. You have to be walking at least, jumping, shouting. This man was praising God. So he was given all the credit and the acknowledgement for where this power came from. Church, it is imperative that we now, we let the world know where the power that has changed us has come from. And if you cannot speak on that, then it is time, church, for you to admit that you are crippled. It is time to, to be born again. It is time to be healed. It is time to get up off of that mat. It's time to not be carried by anybody else anymore. It's time for you to take responsibility for your life and your sins and repent. That was the message that Peter had. Repent. Well, this guy said when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the man who was used to sit, he used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. They saw this man who was who was the the, the beggar on the right every day. That's him. That's, that's, who, that's who his name is. And when they saw him, what was he doing? Praising God, standing up, shouting, jumping around and walking. They noticed. And what does, what does the Bible say? They were filled with wonder and amazement. They were filled with awe. Not they were slightly impressed by it, or that they were, they were somewhat moved by it, but they were filled with it. They were filled with awe. I don't know about you, but when I see a heartwarming story on, uh, on channel 13 or 6 or something that's local, I'm like, now that, that warms my heart. Does it? Does it warm your heart? Or are you just glad that it's not politics? Being moved. Woo, man. By the way, P.S., if you want to talk politics, just talk to White. All right. He's got very strong opinions for a 10-year-old or 11-year-old, ever how old he is. How old is he? Oh, and check out his YouTube channel. He has drawings about 
stuff. Anyway, when you see God at work, this is, this is what I envision. Um, so God laid it on my heart that the vision for our church should be to make Jesus known. And when we, us, y'all, we have been given a, a golden opportunity to, to kind of just restart. You know, with, with COVID shutting everything down and everything being the way it was, and, and now we're, we're open. And it's, it's like we get, to, we get to restart, you know, and, and, and I think it's a perfect time for a revival. And maybe touching the community in a new way or a different way and for them to see that the church is alive, to me that is like the church jumping and shouting and praising God. And y'all, we, we can't do it if, if we're having to just tote one another. We've got to be standing all together in one accord. We've got to all be working together the same way. And it's to glorify our God. Mm. Tell them. Tell them what it is. And then they will be filled with wonder and amazement at what was happening to us. I know I told y'all this morning that, that I want to, I believe that somebody's going to be, be called to do something or going to, going to be moved in a, in a way. I just, I just feel like it's, it's coming, but it's going to take all of us, okay? Um, I want you, I want you to be, be sharing this this feeling of of excitement over what Jesus has done for us. I want you to feel that excitement of being in church together. I want you to post it on on Facebook and stuff as though it's the greatest news you've ever heard because it is. I want you to share it. I want you to tell your friends about it. I want you to let them know. I want you to bother them. I want you to guilt trip them. I want you to get on people's nerves for Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? I want them to be filled with awe and amazement and wonder that you are aggravating them so much because you do not want them to go to hell. I want you to tell them, just come one night. Just come see one night. Just come experience one night. Give me one night. When's the last time you went to church on a Monday? Hmm? How about a Tuesday night? You been to church on a Tuesday night lately? Well, let's come check it out. Let's see how church is on Tuesday night. It's going to be about the same. It is, but we won't tell them that. We'll just wait and see. You want to tell them we're serving ice cream? you got to lie to get people to church? We're going to try to keep people from going to hell. I can just vision people coming down the aisle. We've been able to experience a lot here at Holland. We've had times where the harvest was plenty. There was a lot of folks that have been moved over the years. A lot of different things have happened, and the community has been filled with awe and wonder, and folks were coming in to see what was going on. Let's have that again. There's plenty of crippled folk. If you have been crippled by sin, by fear, by the lies of Satan, walk tonight in the name of Jesus. Pray and walk. If we all walk together, we can be like that first church and people will come with us. You ready to see that church? I'm ready to see it. I'm, I'm already seeing it, and I'm ready to feel it. So if you need to pray for something tonight, personally, pray for that. Or if there's somebody that God has laid on your heart, start praying for them right now, that the Holy Ghost is going to move on them, and that they will be here tomorrow. Then tomorrow you can pray for them again. All right? Let's all stand.